lot of research on osteoporosis, both in terms of treatment and prevention. Um, the frustrating thing about osteoporosis is, well, two things. One, it's very common, so it's something that many of us will have to deal with, or many of our loved ones. Two is that um, the big risk for osteoporosis is fracture, is a, is a broken bone, particularly in the hip or the spine, the vertebrae. And that, those are the areas we measure the mineralization or the density of the bone on what's called a DEXA scan. You measure the hip and the lumbar vertebrae to see how dense they are. And when they have reached a critical level of low density or thinness, that's diagnosed as, well, you can, there's three categorizations. There's the normal, there's what's called osteopenia, which is just the medical ending for a loss of bone, and then osteoporosis, which is when it's more than two and a half standard deviations outside of the normal range. Now, it turns out bone loss is a normal part of the aging, so that's, that's something that's normal. The question is, where are you on the curve? So when you're 50, are you where most 50-year-olds are, or do you have the bone density of a 60-year-old, or better yet, the bone density of a 40-year-old? So it turns out we lay down bone and resort bone roughly in balance throughout most of our lives. Sometime in your 20s, you start on a downward slope, and it's a slow slope. And again, as I said, it's different for everybody, and of course it depends a lot on, most of all, probably your genetics. But a lot depends on diet, and then a lot, most of it depends on your exercise. When we talk about prevention, there's really two modes of preventing or slowing bone loss. One is a healthy and well-balanced diet. Okay, and this is not a specific kind of diet, but you want to have enough dietary calcium and vitamin D. And the, qu the next natural question is, should I go out and get supplements of calcium and vitamin D? And the answer is, well, it depends. Most of the time, if you eat a well-balanced diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables, and you know we all know that uh, dairy products are rich in calcium, it's not totally necessary that you have eat dairy products because for a lot of reasons some people don't like them, either they're lactose intoler intolerant or they might be vegan, in which case they don't want to you know, eat anything dairy. But there are many dietary alternatives to dairy products that are rich in calcium and in vitamin D. But as long as you have a sufficient supply of those in your diet, you'll have the raw ingredients you need to make bone. The other key determinant is weight-bearing exercise. Doctor, does that mean I have to go to the gym and lift barbells? Well, that's what everybody thinks. The answer is that's fine, you can do that. I don't want to dissuade you if that's something you like or enjoy as long as you do it safely and you know, you know what you're doing. But weight-bearing exercise can be walking, right? Because you're, when, you wait, when you walk, you're actually fighting the weight of gravity on your bones. And so it's really a matter of just walking. Uh, it can be aerobic exercise of any variety, whether it's you know, team sports or shooting baskets or playing tennis is a great one that I know 90-year-olds that still play tennis. Uh, golf is another one. It's so a weight-bearing exercise and proper nutrition. Now, it's, you can overdo it with both calcium and vitamin D in your diet, which is why I don't make a blanket recommendation that everyone take those. Because calcium, it turns out if you get too much calcium and you absorb it, it's hard to absorb through your digestive system and that's where the vitamin D comes in. Having an adequate supply of vitamin D lets you absorb calcium through your stomach and intestines to get properly used, but you can get too much calcium, which can lead to calcium deposits in various tissues in your body, um, can also lead to stone formation. So if you're someone who, not everybody gets these, but if you are a kidney stone former, uh, the most common kind of kidney stone is what's called calcium oxalate crystals that can deposit in your kidney, and that, that can be very painful for anyone who's had kidney stones. Same with vitamin D, there's only four fat-soluble vitamins, vitamins A, D, E, and K, and you can actually have too much of those vitamins. Um, and so those are ones you wanna, you really want to just get from eating you know, healthy foods as opposed to taking supplements. Now there are cases in which people are vitamin deficient and, and they, there is a need to supplement, but you can actually measure those levels on blood tests and decide if someone needs supplementation of vitamin A, B, or K. So yes, you want to have enough calcium and vitamin D, but not too much. You don't necessarily want to take supplements if it's not necessary.